Woodworking for Mere Mortals is sponsored by... Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. I'm gonna use solid lumber for the top, and before I get started on anything else, I'm gonna glue this up so it has time to dry. Looks like the edges of these boards are a little bit uneven, so I'm gonna square them up on my router. And I've moved this half of my fence forward just slightly. Yeah, and those fit together without any gaps. I haven't used my biscuit joiner in a long time, but I'm gonna use that to help keep these aligned. These boards will help keep it flat while it's drying. I'm cutting out these four plywood braces oversized. Since I'm gonna have a lot of cutting and sanding to do on these pieces and I want them all to be exactly the same, I've made them a little bit longer so that I can screw them together temporarily. But I'm also gonna use some double-sided tape in the middle parts because the final cuts I make, I'm going to have to remove those screws. Now I can square up this big block by shaving a little bit off of each side. I've printed out and taped up these three sheets that make up the cutting template. I'm going to attach them using spray adhesive. Now I can try to cut out that curve on my bandsaw. And I'll cut off the two ends with the screws in them. Well, I kind of jumped ahead of myself there. One of the reasons I put the screws in there was so that I could sand it and these wouldn't come apart, but I hope the carpet tape holds them together. <laughs> well, I guess that double-sided tape was stronger than I thought it was. It's a lot stronger than I thought it was. A lot stronger. There we go. My original thought was to join the corners together with 45 degree miters and as I got to thinking about this it just seems like a logistical nightmare to do that on something this long at least given the setup that I have. I think there would be gaps there and it probably wouldn't look very good. So instead I decided just to butt these together and to do that I'll just make cut one of these three quarters of an inch wider than the other. I'll make two of these five inches wide and the other two five and three quarters inches wide. Now I can just glue the narrower pieces to the wider pieces. But before I do that, I'll iron on some edge banding. You've probably seen me use this iron on edge banding before. It's really easy. Just cut a strip and iron it on. Then I can just plane it flush to the board. So that gives the plywood a look of solid lumber. I'm going to join these together using pocket holes. I'm going to glue and screw these together. pocket holes in these one and a half inch wide strips for the base. And I'll assemble these the same way. Now I can sand everything smooth, including the top. Now I can cut the top down to its final size. I'm gonna round over all these corners. I'll drill a few more pocket holes in these to attach the base and the top.
and I'll glue and screw these onto the base. I'm gonna clamp this into position just long enough to get those screws in. I can flip it over and attach the top, and I'm just gonna screw it on. And I'll protect it with some spray lacquer. I think this is going to work out really nicely in our living room. If you'd like to make your own table, please check down in the description for a free set of plans. You may have to modify it a little bit depending on the size of your couch and how much space you have below it and how far back you want the table to go. And as always, thank you for watching Woodworking for Mere Mortals. If this is your first time here, you'll be happy to know that I post brand new videos every Friday. <laughs> and I'd love to have you as a subscriber, so take a moment to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a thing. And I hope you'll check out my second channel, Mere Minutes, and please follow me over on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next Friday.